What is up guys? Welcome to another Crack of Pack episode. Today we are opening up a pack of Gate Crash. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, uh, because we are in the midst of changing offices, changing spaces, whatever you want to call it, uh, I am joined by Caitlin, who is not gonna be in the video, but she's just kind of watching, which is real awkward. But it's gonna be awesome. So if she has to rush out because we do have a dog here, uh, that's why. So if you do hear any shuffling in the background or anything, just a heads up. Uh, but we are opening Gate Crash today. Really excited. I love this set. Uh, there are not too many high value cards in this one, but uh, there is some really fun stuff. Uh, obviously, we're in Ravnica right now, and so this is kind of a nice little callback to that. Of course, we're going to go through every card uh, and actually figure out what our pack one pick one would be if we were actually uh, drafting this set. So uh, we do start off with our first common Metropolis Sprite. It's a 1 2. Uh, for one and a blue, it does have flying, and then for one blue, uh, it gets plus one, minus one until end of turn. Uh, this is an okay card. It's a pretty early game like Flyer, so it's going to be able to get in some damage. I like that. I think it's fine. I like the ability to pump it up. It gives you a mana sink uh, late game especially. Uh, granted, you can only use it like once because it's going to kill itself if you do that too many times, but uh, it's not a bad card. It's just kind of an early aggressive kind of blue card, so not, not bad. Not a great card though, to be honest. So uh, Angelic Edict. Is a sorcery for four and a white uh, exile target creature or enchantment. This is actually really, really good. Uh, it's a little expensive, but in limited, most removal is, so it's not too bad. Uh, the fact that it hits creatures and enchantments makes it a little bit more flexible. It kind of sucks that it's a sorcery, but the big upside here is that it exiles. So uh, anything that has graveyard recursion, anything like that, this kind of gets around it. So it is very, very permanent removal. Uh, for that reason, I really like it. I would definitely take it over the sprites so far. Uh, Shattering Blow is one and a hybrid mana of either red or white for an instant that says exile target artifact. Uh, this is like actually not a bad card. It's really good that it exiles as well at instant speed for two mana. That's pretty efficient, uh, but it is target artifact only, which isn't great. Uh, unfortunately, it's going to be designated mostly for sideboard. Uh, but that being said, it's definitely a useful card to have in your sideboard. So. Not that this will be a first pick by any means, but it's definitely something that you could pick up if you were in either red or white and be pretty happy with kind of in the mid to late pack. Uh, Drakewing Krasis is a 3-1 for one, a green, and a blue. Uh, it has flying and trample, so this is a pretty good uh, aggressive flyer. It's a three drop with th uh, with only one power or one toughness, excuse me, uh, and that's kind of bad. Uh, generally speaking, that just means it's going to die really, really quick, which kind of sucks, but... Uh, it does have flying, so it's evasive. It hopefully is going to get around some of the other creatures on the board. And then, of course, it does have trample, so uh, it's going to get at least, hopefully, one or two points of damage in, even if it is blocked. So I do like this card. I don't know if I like it more than the Edict, to be honest, uh, but I'm going to keep them in the same pile for now, just in case. Uh, Midnight Recovery is a sorcery for three and a black. Uh, return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. This also has Cypher, so when uh, you cast it, you may exile the spell encoded onto a creature you control. Uh, whenever that creature deals combat damage to a player, its controller may cast a copy of the encoded card without paying its mana cost. So this could theoretically be a repeatable effect. There was a really powerful, like, unblockable creature. It was a rogue or something like that in this set that Cypher worked very, very well with. Uh, and this is a pretty good effect. This is something that we see in almost every standard set. Uh, it's a pretty good ability. It's one that just gives you a little bit more recursion, which is always welcome. Uh, but it's not that powerful. It's not a card that I'm looking to pick early game. If I'm in black, it's not a bad card to have, but again, not super exciting. Uh, Foundry Street Denizen is a 1-1 for one red. When another red creature enters the battlefield under your control, it gets plus one plus zero. Uh, until end of turn. Now that ability does stack, so if you play multiple red creatures, that will just kind of build up. He can get theoretically really, really strong. Uh, this is actually a really good aggressive one drop in like a Boros style deck where it's just creature after creature, uh, especially with all the like multicolor hybrid cards and things like that. Uh, a card like this is perfect for that. Uh, as a one drop early aggressive card, gets to deal some damage in the like mid game if you do play enough creatures. So really, really like it. Don't like it more than the other cards that we've already got, but not bad. Uh, Zorichi Tiger, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, I have no idea. Um, it's a 2-3 uh, for 3 and a white, and you can pay 1 and a white and tap it, and you gain 2 life. I absolutely hate this card, it's absolutely terrible. Uh, so life gain in general is pretty bad and limited. Uh, it's just, it doesn't do enough. Uh, you really want to be affecting the board. 
This is a 2-3 for 4, which is severely underpowered. Just not good. So absolutely not. Hate that card. Uh, Boros Guildgate. Uh, it enters the battlefield tapped, and it is a land that can tap for either red or white. Uh, there's the whole cycle of guild gates obviously is in this set, uh, or maybe not the whole cycle. I guess there's only half the cycle, but, uh, all of them are good. Uh, it's useful to have fixing of course, because you want to be able to cast your stuff. So, uh, normally you can pick these up though. in like the mid pack or even in the late, uh, sort of the later picks of the pack, just because I mean, they're good, but you really only need certain ones. And so generally speaking, you'll get one or two that are passed to you at some point. So I don't like picking them early, but they are good to have. Uh, Sky Games is an enchant land for one and a blue. The enchanted land has tap it and target creature gains flying until the end of the turn. You can only activate this ability as a sorcery. Uh, really don't like this. This does very little uh, for the game, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, it can give something like an evasive uh, ability so it might be able to swing in for an attack, but I mean, I'd rather just play another creature that could just swing in with the attack. So this just seems really bad. So <laughs> definitely not. Uh, our first uncommon here is Coerced Confession. It's a sorcery for four and then hybrid mana of, of either blue or black. Uh, target player puts the top four cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. You draw a card for each creature card put into the graveyard this way. Uh, I don't really like this. I actually kind of like Mill and Limited. Uh, it's pretty good just because your deck is so much smaller than like in a constructed match. Uh, 40 cards means if you mill four of them at a time, you need to do that, what, 10 times and you're there. Not to mention they're going to draw seven cards at the beginning of the game plus cards every turn. So it's really less than that. Uh, so it's good. Mill is actually a pretty good strategy in Limited, but uh, something like this, I feel like I'd rather just have some board presence. This just doesn't have any, so it doesn't seem all that good. Uh, Dying Wish is an enchant creature uh, for one and a black. It does have to be a creature you control, which is pretty unique. Uh, when it dies, target player loses X life and you gain X life where X is that creature's power. Uh, this I really don't like at all. Uh, enchant creatures are generally bad. This kind of gets around the, up the downside because it's like, well, if the creature dies then it still nugs the opponent for some damage, but like, I don't like to bank on my creatures dying to win the game. So like that just seems really terrible. Uh, so definitely not interested in that. Uh, Simic Flex Mage is a one, two for two and a blue. It has evolve, which is actually a really cool mechanic. So whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, if that creature has a greater power or toughness than this creature, you put a plus one, plus one counter on this creature. Note that that's a counter, not till the end of the turn. Uh, and then you can uh, pay one in a blue and tap it and then move a plus one plus one counter from the flux mage to another creature. Uh, so this is really unique in that it's buffing itself up and then able to kind of spread those counters around, which is fantastic. It's a little bit slow, but I do think that that's worth it, uh, especially over the cards that we've already got. Uh, so this is definitely so far the pick. Uh, okay, well, that's probably going to be our pick. Okay, Luminate Primordial is a four seven for five and two white. Uh, it does have Vigilance, and when it enters the battlefield, uh, for each opponent, exile up to one target creature that player controls, and that player gains uh, life equal to its power. Uh, this is just a big swingy bomb, and you need big swingy bombs in limited, so you take it. Uh, it's also single colored, which is worth noting in this set, uh, just because there is so much fixing with like the guild gates and stuff that this is going to be easy to cast in most decks. Uh, and so, while it's not the strongest thing in the world for seven mana, it is pretty good, and it gets rid of threats on the opponent's side of the field, so I really like it. That's definitely up there. We do have a foil uh, Leyline Phantom. It's a 5-5 five, five for 4 and a blue. When it deals combat damage, uh, you return it to its owner's hand. I really hate that. 5-5 uh, five, five for 5 that bounces itself seems terrible, so <laughs> I definitely don't want it. Uh, so for me, I think it's a pretty easy Luminant Primordial. Uh, feel free to disagree in the comment section below. I'm happy to have that conversation. But if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks, Caitlin, for sticking around. Uh, <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next Rocket Pack episode.